Box Thinking Media in association with Box Raw with me, uh, Baba Tunde Ajayi. Uh, great to see we're in a random corridor here. So, yes, um, listen, the job was to get the win, and you got the win tonight. Well, thank you, first of all, for the interview, Raz. Come on, you know the other man. Um, yeah, it's great to have Ant back. And uh, I saw from the change room, the look in his eyes, the sharpness, the hunger, the desire to want to be where he's most comfortable, and that's in a ring. And uh, what, a, what a knockout. These, this is what Anthony Yard is about, and this is why he, he's loved everywhere, you know, uh, as the most entertaining light heavyweight, in my opinion. Uh, certainly in this country, in Europe, and he's up there in the world. Was it, I, was it a, a decision made on behalf of the team for him to be out of the ring for seven months? Did he need that much time off? Or fantastic performance against Batavia, yes. a great fighter, but did he need that much time off? You know, boxing is 99% mental. I've always said it. Uh, some people always... Um, uh, they they kind of laugh at those figures, you know, that, that esp estimation. But for me, if you're not mentally right, you can be in the best physical shape possible. Your mind is everything. Your mind controls. And, for, and you know, it was, it was another case where, you know, we don't like to lose. We don't have many losses on our records. Um, and for me as a coach, you know, you want to see him reacting well. You want to see that movement, that head movement. And uh, it did take, it took time. But he, think about Anthony, once he's on, he literally would fight every week. And I believe that's where he's back again. You heard him in the change room. He's like, I just want to get straight back out there and start challenging for those world titles again uh, next year. We all know that the, the light heavyweight division is flying in the UK. Um, he's got this fight out of the way. I'm sure it's, it's what, sep end of September now, September 23rd. Yes. So you, you want him to fight at least one more time this year and a, and a durable Opponent. Yeah, even listen, I was, we was expecting a good fight with Ricky Summers. I don't know his situation. Uh, they, they told us it's a broken nose uh, a week before the fight. Uh, but, you know, listen, Ricky is a, a good fighter. He's an English champion. And uh, uh, that could be a possible end of the year fight. And we're good to go next year. You know, they, and these are Anthony's words. Um, and if not Ricky Summers, let's get someone else in. But I feel, you know, listen, we can't just... Andy's a top-class fighter, you know, and uh, obviously we're coming off a loss in January. This is our first fight back. This is September, month nine. So, you know, we've got three more months. We can get one more in, definitely. And then, yeah, it is where it is. If, if the price was right and the deal structure was right, would you wait out until early next year for the winner of Boatsy? Because it's very unlikely that you fight that particular winner this year, yes. but would you would you wait until if a deal got got done? Obviously, not you just guys waiting around. Yes. Well, listen, Anthony is the boss, uh, and 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 Anthony, you heard Anthony in the changing room. He said it's time, <laughs> and he, he, it's time. He said if there's no world title, uh, then it's time. But I, I was of the opinion that uh, Dan and Joshua Buatsi were fighting for an eliminator for the world title, so. Again, I guess it's not all in our court. It's down to the winner, whether they want to. I mean, who doesn't want to fight for a world title? I don't get it. You know, I, I don't get what fighters are waiting around for. Anthony Yard, with the least experience, has taken on two of the best light heavyweights in the last 10 years. And, and Anthony's done incredible. So I, I wait, we'll wait and see what that, uh, either Dan or Joshua wants to do, whether they want to, you know, take the step up and actually fight for a world title, or they fancy... Um, Eddie Hearn's spoken about Dimitri Bivol wanted to fight in December. Um, no opponent yet for Bivol, okay. but they would obviously like to keep Bivol on the zone. Yes. So would you entertain Anthony going on another platform? Is that down to Frank and, and the team to make that decision? Uh, against Bivol? Listen... <laughs> What, what's Anthony Yard? Is Anthony Yard the, like the Russian slayer? For, for, is he the Russian slayer for everybody else? I don't know what's the matter with these guys. You know, they, you know and again, don't take it in the wrong way. I'm not saying that Anthony would not fight. But I'm an manager as well. You know, he, he, he came into this game relatively late. And uh, he's proven that he's not ducking, 
dodging anyone and has, ne has never done that. So I'm like, I have to ask myself what the other fighters are in it for. Are they waiting for a YouTuber to come along and, and, and offer them incredible amounts of money uh, for a fight which they know they're going to win? Or do they actually want to fight? You know, so we ain't, from a managerial standpoint, we ain't helping someone out to keep them on their platform. It don't work like that. And so um, we'll just have to wait and see. Well, well, we'll see what happens over the next couple of weeks. Before I let you go, uh, some sad stuff. Obviously, a documentary came out yesterday, Channel 4, about racism um, within the board. Uh, I'm not sure if you've seen any highlight clips or the actual documentary. Um, just want to get your comments and no, thoughts. You know, you know, you know I, I don't know. I've been in camp, and everyone who knows me... What's going on out there? Something sounds like something's going on in the Zhang fight early, and I did say I'm predicting something early, but um, listen, racism uh, is certainly not something that, you know, we should be dealing with in the year 2023. I think that um, there has to be some diversity. I mean, every major brand is talking about diversity in his system now. So although I haven't seen the documentary, although I haven't seen anything about it, I did hear about it, but you know, um, I'm sure it'll be dealt with. See, the thing is, I always say, and I always say, I was saying to these lot today, the great thing is that attention has been brought, in, has been brought to it. So from there, you can grow, you can elevate, you can uh, approach certain things and deal with them. So I'm, I'm happy that um, I think it's uh, Jeff Hines and um, Ian John Lewis are the two guys I mentioned. And I know Jeff Hines, I remember he was messaging me, you know, speaking about it a while back, a while back. Uh, so I always knew that, um, and I'm just glad he's, you know, it's finally been brought into the attention of everyone. So yeah, we can deal with it. But I don't personally have nothing to say about that because I haven't had no bad experiences. Which I appreciate. Um, to finally, Conor Ben returns to the ring in a couple of hours in America. Um, some people pro, some people against. Yes. What are your thoughts? I'm not a judge. I don't judge no man. Um, from what I understand, I'm only, I, I only know Conor from when I speak to him. And I, One thing about Tunde, I just don't pry into people's purse because you just don't know what's going on. You can't, nobody on the outside can just say he's guilty if he's not guilty and been proven guilty. Um, but from what I understand is, he's not proven he's innocent as either. And so, um, should he be allowed to fight? I know, don't know, I think that's a moralistic question that people have to ask themselves. Is he entitled to earn a living? He hasn't earned any money for 18 months. He's a, he's a fighter, you know, and uh, he wants to fight. And, he, and, and, and so if it's, if it's a case where they've had to go to another country for him to at least keep active, then um, yeah, I'm not the judge or jury. I know I said final one, but just just touching back back on Anthony quickly, Tunde. You said you were his manager. Yes. If Sky came with the right deal for you, mm. for Boatzi, for Aziz, yes. next year, would you take Anthony to let him? Would you allow Anthony to fight on Sky Sports if the package was right? Come on, guys. <laughs> it would be remiss of me to speak about business <laughs> in an alleyway. <laughs> Next to a toilet. <laughs> Next to a toilet in Wembley Arena. Listen, money is, I would say, 99% motivation for a lot of boxers. But sometimes it's bigger than that. You know, not some, there, there are a few athletes where it's bigger than that. I'm not in a position. Anthony Yard is a fighter, and let's not get this mistaken. I'm his manager, meaning that it's advice. I always advise, and, and I have done that from the beginning of his career. But I can see that Anthony has got that thing about him. He just wants to take guys out again. So I'll leave that decision with Anthony. I just advise. I just advise. <laughs> Jai, as always, a pleasure. Thank you for speaking to Boxing King Media. Thank you, Wes. Appreciate it. Yeah.